You are listening to the Savage Fincast, episode 36. Don't call her Shart. Chicago. A criminal mastermind called Overlord held our city in his terrifying grip. Ordinary cops were losing the battle against Overlord's super freaks and mutants. Then, a miracle happened. When I found him, he had no memory of his past. I helped him find an identity and a life. Now we have a fighting chance. Now we have the dragon. This is the Savage Fincast, the show that will Google that for you. <laughs> I am Jim Purcell. I'm Craig Olson. I'm Raven Perez. And we are back again for a new episode. We've got a lot of exciting things to talk about. Is is the new year? We're actually recording this on the second. Uh, I guess it's first. The first. The first of the new year. Heck yeah. Uh, we're gonna be uh taking a look back at Savage Dragon throughout the last year. We're gonna take. We're gonna talk about what other stuff we've been reading during the whole, the last year. Then of course we've got our regular news, uh, trivia. A uh, new feature that Craig will talk about later. And, uh, of course, we're going to be talking about the newest issue, Savage Dragon 201. It's a cram-packed episode. Sure is. Sweet. Got a lot of good stuff to go through. So why don't we kick it off, chappies, by starting with the uh, year in review. It's been a pretty, uh, pretty crazy year, actually. Yeah. Hell yeah. Especially for Savage Dragon. Holy crap. Well, I mean, it started off with 193 with Malcolm taking over the book and ended with 200, you know, on the high note of that that anniversary issue. So it's pretty exciting. And in addition, um, you also had Nancy and Hill, which I was is Malcolm's official first crossover. And uh, I didn't I wasn't on that FinCast episode. I'm not going to eat up a ton of time blabbing about it, but I do want to relish this chance to say that um, I seriously did love that. Uh, I think it was underrated big time. I think it was really high quality, and if you get a chance, I think it's a really good pickup for your Savage Dragon collection. Well, I say, I, I'll say at the time, I didn't have a copy. Uh, a few months later, a digital version finally came out, and I finally read it, and I agree, it was actually really good. I really liked it. And uh, it was very- is really visually interesting, and the story was pretty good. I mean, it, it felt a little bit short being a one shot, but I thought that overall it worked great. Oh. Yeah, I was re- I was ready to blow it off. I thought it was going to be just kind of like done by somebody that doesn't know anything about Dragon and just kind of half assed in a way to get like a big character in their book. But yeah, there was there was kind of like an anti hype coming into it. Like it was like the- a, it was Nancy and Hell crossed over with Savage Dragon, and right. it was an Nancy and Hell comic, right, with Malcolm in it. But the cool thing was you had, like, guest star, like, The Fiend as a villain, which we hadn't seen in forever. Right. And it made perfect sense because she's still in hell. And that was just kind of a fun little nod. And, and they played the characters right. And uh, in addition, I mean, like I said, it just uh, really Savage Dragon fans, like, the guy, you read the little, like, uh, fair, you know, end cap there by the uh, author at the end. And it's just, like, talking about how he's always been a fan and... You know, he's really always wanted this. And uh, you could tell, like, really, as you read it, you're like, wow, you know, this guy does know what he's talking about. And then you read the last thing. He's like, yeah, you know, I've always wanted it's a dream come true to have this crossover. It was really good. So much better than I thought it'd be. Yeah. Uh, Giant Size Kung Fu Bible Stories, in addition. Oh, yeah. Which I have not read yet. The introduction Uh, of Jack Champion. Yeah, that's it's just cool. Just just being a treasury size and seeing Eric's art blown up like that. Um. I thought some of the other creators, hmm, some of the other stories weren't as good. I don't, I don't feel like everyone did their all, but I think for the price of the book, the Bruce Tim story and the Eric Larson story was well worth it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You're getting your money's worth. Even I, I agree. I don't think everyone brought home the bacon necessarily, but even if you just take those two, like I liked Otley's. Even if you take those yeah, two into definitely. consideration, it was still like a hell of a thing. That's why I right. think, even though it's funny, because like like Jim said, when you look back and see that it was only from one ninety three to two hundred, it's kind of like, wow, is that seven issues in twelve months? But it was a hell of a year anyway. <laughs> yeah. Just a yeah, swirl definitely. of excitement and announcements and stuff. 
Do you guys? Yeah, have- and I think I think with this year, it just kind of brought in a whole uh, breath of fresh air with Larson, with with Malcolm taking over the book. Some of the things he did in this past year on Savage Dragon were just pretty amazing. Uh, some of the new characters he introduced. You got that double uh, double splash page page issue. Mm-hmm. Um, you got uh, some villains like Torment, which was kind of he was a really cool looking dude. Um, Maxine's development in the book, like everyone's development, Frank's development, um, just just some real good storytelling, good, you know, kind of high school level, college level writing. Like, I mean, in terms of writing it from the eyes of a high school or college kid, I thought Eric really nailed it. Oh yeah, the the way the like uh, the voice of the kids, and then there was the evolution to uh, like two up art. So like yes 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 huge yeah that happened this year and a return of the uh, comic strips to the back in addition like the funnies sort of yep. begin this year and uh, Vanguard yeah. came back and uh, yeah yeah it's been awesome I mean it's been a really when you look at like all this stuff that has happened I think even Dart uh, has just the leaps and bounds in Dart. Like, you know, Dart's kind of not, I wasn't really super jazzed about Dart, but Dart's become such a badass. There was the whole Nick right, Cardi right. homage that had that bizarre, like, timeliness with, like, Nick Cardi's death. Right. Yeah, yeah, with the cover, the homage cover. Of- 196 homage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I tell you, one of my favorite Savage Dragon issues of all time was this year, was, that happened this year was 194 with the, with the one with torment with those couple of those splash pages that were just was that no that wasn't the one with torment that which one was that the one with the splash pages with was that torment one, with the building 194 thing? was torment and that was the one with the building yeah yeah that those pages in that book i think that was the first twice up book it was i think yeah um i remember correctly we were pretty down on 193 yeah, in terms yeah. of a, a jumping on point, yeah, we, but right. 194 really blew it out of the water. Yeah, yeah. we were hateful. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I did, I do think uh, it was approached a little bit weirdly, but um, and I was, I think, a little bit nervous based on that issue for right. the rest of the the series coming up. But 194 with that twice up art and that torment character and buildings flying all over the place, like. That that artwork in there just I just remember talking about that and being so excited when we were discussing that on the FinCast. Oh yeah, because because that book just like blew me away and you know I, I consider that probably one of my favorite issues of the series right now. I remember because it was like we were like oh no what a lukewarm beginning and then when 194 came out we were like totally redeemed yourself. <laughs> right right. In addition, yep. R.I.P. Lightning Powers. 2014. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you left us yeah, too soon. It was. You left us too soon, Lightning Powers. You think that they're going to be gone forever, or you think that they'll I, come back somehow? I, I think they're gone for the foreseeable future. I think... Bar- barring some kind of cosmic event. I would mm-hmm. love to see them come back, but uh, because I think they were one of the things that made Malcolm unique... But uh, it'll be – I just think it'll be interesting to see. I think they're coming back. It would just be down the road, but – Do you think it will just come naturally back or there will be some sort of like he'll get like electrocuted and they'll come back? Wouldn't that be great? Something like that, you know? <laughs> well, his body's naturally like a con- able to handle electricity, so you got to wonder, you know? Yeah. Maybe we'll get hit by Thor. Maybe he'll get kicked by a mule. <laughs> Make him cross eyed and give his lightning power back. <laughs> it was like it's clobbering time. Yeah, 2014 we saw Herringbone Seed <laughs> first appearance and death. <laughs> Intro and outro. <laughs> but that was that was a great scene. Remember that splash where uh, Malcolm's just whipping those chains, like the the troll made chains or the demonoid chains or whatever they are. Right. Yeah. And uh, he just cuts that dude in half. But the, the just the the action and, and the the sense that 
the fluidity of that page with the chains flying all around. It was that's probably one of the cooler splash pages. All that wrecking ball ever. stuff was just bad ass. Yeah, yeah. And Belko the... Belko Chemicals really stepped up as an actual character. I think. Well, not right. yet. Uh, coming up, I'm going to have opinions on that. Okay. Yeah, we can say it for that, but we did, you know, with. The, the uglies unlimited and everything and and you think that was kind of put away and then it shows back up again in two you know 201 but yeah um but um I, my, my big concern about belco chemicals was that they were kind of a faceless monolith and i didn't really care anything about what they did right but uh it was funny they started to ooch into the more and more like uh you know Again, we'll say we don't want to, you know, dip into the new issue, but like just yet. But like, uh, you know, Malcolm did actually go to Belco Chemicals in 197. Right. So it's kind of awesome because it was like, well, you know, now it's a place he went. <laughs> you know? So I don't know. definitely, it's cool. It's good. It was fucking kill a hell of a year. Yeah, yeah, and there's still other, you know, villains that we we're introduced to, like the Demonoids, which you know, kind of came out of nowhere, but they were in flashbacks and then were kind of played a major role for a couple issues. Waldo uh, made his debut. <laughs> does, he, does he got a wiki page yet? <laughs> Gavin, get on that Waldo wiki. First, <laughs> first appearance, 199. But, you know, we never saw the, the kind of the return of that weird shaman guy or whatever. No, that, gave- that hasn't happened yet. Spoon's girlfriend, her powers. That was at the end of 193, right? Um, no, it wasn't. Before, I, don't know. Was that, I want to say it was 192. Was it just before the takeover or just after? I think it was just before Malcolm took over because I'm flipping through 193 right now. And 193 is when he punched out Baby Guy. Right, Tantrum. And then it just goes on from there. Um, so, no, I'm pretty sure he fought Spoon's girlfriend. Um,. She had a cool name. Why are we calling her Spoon's girlfriend? I don't know. I don't remember her name. That's why off the top of my head. It was like Goopy, Goopy lady or something <laughs> like that. Goopy gal or something like that. But and from what I understand, he punched her and she kind of blew apart into goop. And, you know, there was kind of that hint that, you know, she'll be back. She terminated back together. So... We didn't see that this year. Maybe, maybe in 2015. He was a power broker style character, like a guy you go to and get powers, which we haven't. seen. Yeah, she went up to like the Himalayan mountains or something. I don't know. He strikes me more of a, um, um, like a Fonte wizard type dude, or yeah, more more like what? Not the was it the fiend who gave people powers? Fiend no. was the devil from hell. Right. Right. Johnny and Redbeard went... gave people powers. There was Power Broker gave people powers. I thought yep. the Power Broker and Johnny Redbeard were the, was one and the same. Oh shit, are they? I no. think so. No. No? No. Uh, Power Broker was like on the West Coast. Remember, there was the, the issue where Dragon bumped into him when he was doing the world tour when he met Prism. Yes. And Power Broker oh, had these like okay. weird kind of like giant hands and he had and I think he head. died like as soon as we met him he was like as soon as he was introduced he was like killed in that issue he was like oh. shot in the head right all and right real herring bowed seed that guy it was, it was the kind of guy that you just always heard about oh throughout. i guess i guess johnny redbeard was being called the creator when he was a big yes, guy. yes. That's- yeah that was eric trying to get away from like him just being a john byrne spoof i thought he made him more of a john byrne spoof by giving him a big head <laughs> Um, I guess you could interpret it that way, but and then I remember they a bunch of bad knockoffs. <laughs> I remember somewhere reading about that, though. I like mean, that whole yeah. issue is nothing but puns about how John Byrne is out of touch and doesn't do anything right. <laughs> <laughs> I I think you're on the right track, kind of though, Craig, because it's like uh, if not if I'm remembering right, Johnny Redbeard was even designed to be like a red bearded Zeus style character, but Eric didn't yeah. do that design because it showed up in a backup. Right. And then later, when Eric like moved him away, he made him sort of like a Modoc character. Yeah, once the Savage World kicked in in the new universe, he became like a Modoc giant head character. My back itches. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's his motivation for evil. So, uh, in the kind of based on our our time, to so not make this uh, episode two hours long. Right. Uh, time to truck along. So what, you, we, well, what was you guys' favorite issues? 
Uh, oh dear. I think I mentioned it. What did I say? One, one ninety four. I love the the splash page and the um the twice up introduction. Right. And a couple of those pages. Um, I think it was one ninety seven with uh no one ninety six. I think Herring it was one ninety seven. Was was herringbone seed with death in one ninety six? I believe it was. Yeah, might have been one ninety six. Yeah, it was. Yes, it was. Yeah, I enjoyed that, and of course, uh, two hundred. Oh yeah, <laughs> I I enjoyed the hell out of two hundred just because it took me like an hour to get through, and there's just so much to look at. It's just you know, it's a special issue that only comes around once, and you know that type of issue is you know once every ten years almost. You know. Oh yeah, huge milestone. 200. What about you guys? I'm going to give it to 199. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. I think I like 199 more than 200, at least main story wise. I can see that. I, I enjoyed the, the splashes. It just went by too fast for me. And I think it's really hard to to write a, a good story when you're doing all double page splashes. I, I thought it was an awesome kind of experiment. And the art, of course, was spectacular. But the the brevity i guess of it kind of didn't didn't put it on the the charts for me i see that's fair enough i don't know i thought it did pretty well with what you know what space it had mm-hmm. uh, i do awesome think, splashes I do, though yeah yeah i was inspired by 199 i'm definitely i'm doing a big monster story like down the road and i've decided that you, you gotta have double page splashes for and for the listeners when you say you're doing a monster you have your own oh yeah, web yeah. <laughs> and some people are gonna be new to this and they're gonna remember you know what the but, hell is uh, this guy talking about <laughs> no i just thought I, yeah i don't like to promote that too awful much but i do make a little rag and I have a giant story tale in the can, a giant monster story in the can. And uh, I definitely, after reading 199, I was like, oh, shit, I want to do this. It looks like super fun. So even though 199 I was inspired by, I got to give it 200 for the win because it ended like with a cliche love triangle in such an awesome way. Um, and obviously it's just a huge collection of badass tales and it's giant and it's super great and it's a milestone. So right. 200 gets a golden ring for me. Sweet. Shall we news? Uh, I wanted to just ask if you guys read any other comics during 2014. No. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> anything anything interesting this year, comic-wise, uh, notable? I don't even know. I'm sure there is. I'm going to give... You go first, Raven. i got to think about it. Mine's real super easy. There's two things. They're both Kirkman books. These are the like top high points of the other comics I read. Ooh, crap. Just real quick, three. Uh, I hate this. <laughs> Sorry, I'll be super quick. Um, Invincible, uh, the rape issue, I was like, yeah, that's kind of uh, left field and surprising. Was that this year? I think it was. That seems so long ago. It does seem, but that's only because it feels like there's only been like five issues of Invincible this year. It's been crazy how late that book has been. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure the rape issue was this year. May have been. And that was pretty bold choice i thought i like the issue uh the walking dead time jump uh i thought was awesome which i still have not read oh shit damn i'm sorry dude i know you kept you keep telling me to give it a try and i'm finally caught up on the war okay well there hasn't been a sale for the jump yet the beautiful thing was that i hated the end of the war it was the most anticlimactic piece of garbage ever that yeah that's (laughs) yeah it was wretched and then just like we were talking about with Dragon, the time jump comes in totally like boom surprises. How much did they jump by? Not much. I, Not I read a, a few. I read a preview, a couple of preview pages, and it looks like it's only been a few years. Yeah, it's only a few years, but it's the kind of thing you don't see a lot in American comics. It's time jumps. Yeah. yeah. So I was super uh, excited and happy. It totally redeemed the series. I was like. See, before I even looked into it, I kind of was hoping the jump would be it'd be a different set of characters, a different place, and like a long time in the future, like decades. Unfortunately, see now, unfortunately, you're losing the punch because when it, you start reading that issue, um, they play with you like that a little tiny right. bit, so you don't know. Yeah. But then eventually you find out, yeah, it's still Rick and Carl and all those guys you know. Yeah. But like, yeah, unfortunately, you don't have that surprise. I mean, you've seen covers. Yeah. You know, now at this point, I've seen I've seen uh, uh, Jesus on the covers. So yeah. So unfortunately, that surprise is gone for you because that was something they messed with you a little bit. Because you just there's not a, like a word balloon that says seven years later. It's gotcha. just you're just reading and you just 
suddenly you don't know what the hell's going on because everything's so weird, and then you realize, oh shit, years have gone by. Yeah. That was awesome. Last thing, and then I'll shut up. Um, Pax Americana was the high point of was it? multiversity. Yeah. Oh. I have higher been, than Dino Cop. I, I'm sorry, I love Dino Cop. Um, I but we have not seen enough of because he hasn't appeared again since the first issue. I don't think he's going to appear again until the last issue. Last issue, because that's kind of how it looks like it's structured. But um, pa- so far, Multiversity was not setting my world on fire. Not Grant Morrison's strongest work. Pax Americana comes in and again just blew my mind. It was more for Frank Quildy, right? It was absolutely him. Uh, he does a lot of like Will Eisner style pages where right. the background's static, but the characters are moving through the page. Right. Master level storytelling. I heard that that book, the way it was written is, is, is you can read it forwards and backwards. The beginning is the end and right. the middle is the middle. And there's also a double page spread where three simultaneous scenes are playing out on the same two pages there's before a murder, there's the moment of the murder, and then there's the murder investigation. Right. All three points in time are playing out simultaneously on two pages. It's insane. Yeah. Really, it's all quietly. I mean, it's good storytelling, mm-hmm. but quietly just like, ah, oh, dude, it's awesome. If you get a chance, get it. It's it's great. Is it good as a standalone story, or does it tie in the multiversity thing like the other issues It's did? really standalone um, you really don't even have to read any multiversity anything. Um, if you have read Watchmen, you will enjoy it because it's basically right. a ripoff. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a ripoff of Watchmen, but well, it's complicated because Watchmen is based off of those characters, yeah. and so this is those characters through the Watchmen lens. A- exactly, uh, but it's kind of cool. Like I said, when you first read it, you'll think, "Huh, this is just confusing, and I don't understand anything." But then I had to reread it like three or four times to really like get every single like little nuanced storytelling. Like it's just jam packed, dude. And so it just really it's 32 pages. So it's bigger than a normal issue. Right. But it's basically the entirety of Watchmen crammed into 32 pages. Plus it fits with this university. Plus it's a multiversity thing. Plus it's also just a good standalone story. It's awesome comic telling. Huh. It's great. Well, I was I, I I was a little let down by the first couple of issues of uh, the multiversity stuff, so I've been holding off for price drops. Totally agree. I'll be probably catching up with it next month. Um, hmm. Although that freaking Captain Marvel one looks good. I'll tell you when I get it. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Um, for me this year, I read a lot of comics this year. Um, big comics. Uh, best first issue for me was a. Uh, uh, Kurt Busiek's uh, new Tooth and Claw from Image. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was freaking amazing, that first issue. I have it. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Oh, man, that is, like, the perfect example of how you do a first issue. It, just, it builds up this whole universe with – fills it with characters and gives it, gives it history, and it feels like a living, breathing place. And then it just kind of turns everything on its head at the end, and it's just so well executed. I can't believe I almost skipped it. <laughs> Hmm. I want to get in on it based on your recommendation, man. Yeah, boostick has been good this year. Astro City's been really good, too. I've always enjoyed that series, and this year's been really good in terms of story quality. All right. Um, probably my favorite new series, is, um, though, is uh, is uh, Jay Faber's uh, Copperhead. Yes, great, great. I had that on my list. I've heard nothing great about it. it. You know, it's a sci-fi western, you know. So uh, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Good it's deal. it's it's really like a western tale and just throw a bunch of aliens on it. Um, I, I, it looks great. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't like his last series, Near Death. Uh, I thought it was a little bit plotting, and I didn't. And the way he structured it was, it was more every every issue was like standalone, and it never felt like he was building to anything. So I didn't enjoy it very much, and eventually dropped it. But this is really, really good. It's like. I love Noble Causes. That was like one of my favorite series of all time. And while this is nothing like Noble Causes, it feels like that energy is there. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It, And that's another one where you feel like, uh, you know, that this universe has kind of been around. Oh, right. I uh, um, thought for sure, Jim, you were going to say Naruto ending. Naruto. Yeah, Naruto's ending. That Another another amazing <laughs> a milestone reach. 700 chapters. Naruto's not very good. 
I did not enjoy that as much, but I did enjoy it far more than uh, this other series that was running in a weekly Shonen Jump called, uh, how is it pronounced? Naeskoi False Love, which is like this <laughs> worst. What? <laughs> it's called, it's this, the worst harem, an, uh, harem manga I've ever read in my entire life, and I've read some bad ones. That's bad. That's a bad genre. It's like Ranma one half without anything interesting happening ever, and a lot of creepy. Oh, actually, you know what? There is kind of a similarity to Savage Dragon there. There's this creepy not half sister relationship thing. <laughs> now I think about it. Nice. Is a his a his teacher who's like 19 years old in high school was lived with him when he was a child, and now she's creeping on him as a yeah. high school student. So it's <laughs> a teacher student and a, like a not like a like a sort of sibling creepy thing. It, it's awful. It's awful. You know what? Like and I have to read it every freaking week because I I'm the kind of person who reads every story in an anthology. <laughs> like Selena Gomez says, the heart wants what it wants. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. But I will say probably coming out of nowhere, my favorite single issue of 2014 was Mega Man 35 wow. from Archie Comics. Hmm. You, you will believe a fighting <laughs> cartoon robot can cry. Don't make me cry, Jim. It's it's just an amazing Asimov-esque these are robots and they have semi-human emotions and they're dealing with some really heavy shit being almost people. It's, it's, that it's, sounds it's, way above Archie Comics pay. No shit. Yeah, right. No Mega shit. Man. <laughs> it, this is a this. Mega Man is consistently the best all ages book on the market. Period. Full stop. I believe it might be the longest running, or is it Sonic? Which one's no, Sonic? that's Sonic. Okay. Sonic isn't as good as Mega Man, although they're both written by the same guy. But Sonic tries. Okay. So, Sonic also has some really fucked up things happen sometimes. Okay. Well, it's like, good that they don't. That write deals down. with death a lot. I mean, it's good that they don't write down. Oh, no. <laughs> Especially that issue of Mega Man. And in the latest issue of Mega Man, there's been a lot of dealing with, like... See, when you're a fighting robot, you kill a lot of other robots. And that weighs heavy on Mega Man. Okay. Mm. That is so much more awesome than it should be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how so, much yeah. Is, how much is, like, Mega Man so? Like, is that a pretty popular comic? I or? think it is, isn't it? It's semi-popular. It's not as... Um, the, the, I believe Sonic the Hedgehog was one of Archie's longest, best-selling, longest-running series, but sales have been down a lot lately. Archie's actually re-kajiggering their whole uh, thing. Is that a real word? Re-kajiggering? <laughs> yes. <Yeah, sorry. laughs> they're, they're relaunching Archie, the series, which has been yeah. running for like 700 issues, which kind of sucks. Yeah. yeah way to drop the ball, guys. They're they're modernizing it, and they're that sort of thing. And I'm really looking forward to uh, they're doing another Sonic Mega Man crossover this summer, and the last one was excellent. So yeah, those look good. I mean, oh, they are good. They really look good. Like a lot of thought, you can tell a lot of thought went into them. It's not just some cheap cash in. Oh no, this and, and it, it went like what did it go like nine issues across three series, and it was practically weekly last uh, last time. I expect it'll be similar this time. It was just. How you do a crossover well. You take the best parts of two characters and you just let them do their thing. It, it's Ian Flynn, the writer on Mega Man and Sonic, he's just he's just an expert at his craft. Hell yeah, right on. Cool. Well, Craig? So I'll go through my list real quick. I had a, a bunch that I've been reading I've been enjoying this year. I thought it was a, a decent year for comics. Uh, Remenda's Black Science uh, comic is... You, you've been liking that? Yeah, you don't enjoy the, that? I read the first issue and I couldn't get the energy to continue. <laughs> it's just every... It, it's a kind of like story where every issue they're in a whole different alien landscape. They're right. just jumping from place to place. It was, I, it's, I, I like that. It's like it's like really like creepy violent sliders, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, if you want to say that. Yeah, I can see that. Um, Transformers vs. G.I. Joe by uh, Tom Scholey. I, I have no interest in Transformers or G.I. Joe normally, but right. he's making it fun. I played with the toys as a kid, and when you read it, I feel like I'm playing with the toys as like a 10-year-old. Like It's just straight-up fun, silliness. It's you know, I could see how it could be very dividing among fans of the, the, the comics, but uh, I think it's pretty enjoyable. 
I'm a couple issues behind, but I've also been enjoying it quite a lot. Yeah. I think it's just a feast for the eyes. He's doing a lot of kind of funny, quirky things with panels and uh, captions and yeah, yeah. It's just neat, just fun. Um, Copra, of course, we always talk up on the show because mm-hmm. it's freaking rad. Um, Michelle uh, Fife's uh, put out issue 13 through 18, so. Mm-hmm. I thought he was going to take a longer break after putting out 12 issues and he came back with another six issue arc, which kind of focused on the individual characters. Is he still and going? Or I thought he may have said that he was, he going did, to do it after he, six. No, he's, uh, he just finished with 18 and he just put out a subscription for 2015. Isn't that okay. awesome? I thought when he was yeah. like signed on with Marvel that he was going to just chill out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's still doing his thing. I was like, he is so rad. And, and this, this new Copra, uh, the, the past uh, 13 through 18, each issue focuses on one member and great stories. Is uh, If anyone's out there knows the characters, issue 17 with Rax is just a feast for the eyes. Uh, issue 18 with Xenia is pretty cool. The Lloyd issue, which is 13, uh, just neat. You know, If you're not reading it, go out and read it. They make a collected edition now. Um, fun stuff. You can get it through Diamond even. Yeah, and gorgeous art. You know, it's it's not your typical superhero type art, um, and it's it's but it's gorgeous. Um, it's kind of like Kirby or Ditko through like an indie artist lens, and it's 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 neat. That probably doesn't do it justice, but yeah. also I'm pretty sure Ditko does indie comics. I will say what does it justice. There's nobody making art like him that I can yeah. think of. I really right, can't right. think of anybody who's like, oh, it's like this. Fucking really, right. I can't think of anybody like it. Right, well, right. Scully's probably the closest. Still, the I don't know. I, I, I don't think at all. Yeah, real I, different. I don't think it's close. But um, I'll go real quick just to wrap it up. Southern Bastards, awesome story. It's awesome, like crime uh, story by Image Comics. Um, the Field, which is was way off the radar. I think it kind of snuck up on there. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. No. It was uh, The Field. No, I haven't heard of that. By Ed Brisson and. Uh, Simon Roy, the the artist of yep. Prophet. Um, oh, okay. Now I never remember what you're talking. About. Just a crazy little mini series. Uh, it just came out of nowhere, and it's just really messed up. And I, I can't really talk, like, say anything about it without giving anything away, really. But it's just like you read the first three or four issues, and you're just maybe it was three issues. I forget how many issues long it was, but at least two thirds of it, and even maybe through the whole thing, you're just like, what the hell is going on? You don't understand <laughs> until like. The last couple of pages, just just amazing, violent, crazy stuff. Um, and I also had Copperhead on my list, um, which uh, Jim went through. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of other comics I've been reading, but those are the ones that kind of stood out to me. Sweet. So let's uh, let's wrap this up and, and get to the Eric Larson news. news. All right. So, um, on our first issue, or first uh, little bit of news of 2015, and this really came out of nowhere for me, Savage Dragon Legacy One-Shot. Yes. Recently announced Savage Dragon One-Shot titled Legacy. It's going to be a gold sponsor comic book title for this year's free comic book day event. That's going to be May 2nd, 2015. And I believe we have some solicitation. The generational saga of Savage Dragon reaches a new milestone as Malcolm Dragon graduates high school and follows in his father's footsteps to the Chicago Police Department. Every young new officer has a lot to live up to, but for the son of a world-famous figurine as renowned as he is reviled, navigating the world of law enforcement is especially challenging. The cost of failure's high in a city becoming more dangerous by the day. Can Malcolm step out of his father's shadow and become the hero Chicago needs? Or is he doomed to make the same mistakes? Famous figurine, eh? That's <laughs> it. Famous figurine. <laughs> so. um, it's quite exciting. I, I, I'm wondering if this is going to be reprinted as an issue like the last time he did this. He said he was going to be reprinted at some point, like in a, probably it's like a backup or something like that okay on facebook so that if you don't get free comics a free comic book day like overseas or something that you'll still be able to read the story right well i remember i mean i mean last time with the dragon daredevil they they came out as a 
Oh, as like a, a as a pre comic book day, and it was the main story of the regular gotcha, issue. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I'm not so sure. Th- this time it sounds more like a, it'll be more uh, contained as a one shot, probably reprinted in the trade, maybe because it is probably important to the to the main story. Gotcha. Um, no, it sounds really interesting. Um, it's funny he's graduating high school so soon, though. Uh, they, although I guess he's been in high school for a while. I think he'll be 18 this year. Yeah, yeah, it's based on real time, so don't think of it issue wise. Yeah, uh, becoming a cop's kind of an interesting um, twist. Uh, it's one of those things where, on the surface, it kind of seems like it's step taking a step back, like you know when Back in Blue happened. But we all know how Back in Blue ended up. <laughs> yeah, right. so Back in Blue for like five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so anything's possible here. I think it's a genius kind of a play because. Um, even though Savage Dragon was not really hardly a cop for most of his career, uh, I mean most of the uh, series, uh, for some reason, people always think of Savage Dragon as a cop. So right. if you have Savage Dragon legacy, you kind of let the cop, Savage Dragon the cop, you let the people who still are in Savage Dragon's a cop mode no, hey, he's got a son. He's a cop, you know. At least they the- see it and they go, "Savage Dragon, the cop." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so at least be a little bit of like bait. And I know the at least at my comic shop, uh, the Daredevil comic went over great. People really liked well, that's it. Cool. So cool. I think this is smart. Yeah. So next bit of news. Oh yes. Um... Eric Larson uh, fan group and official Savage Dragon group page were recently launched uh, on Facebook. Uh, you can find it at uh, facebook.com slash group slash Eric Larson fans, all one word. Yeah, and that's basically that, – that fan group was started. Uh, I think the discussion forums were down and uh, uh, Simon Millette, who does the Average Dragon strip, started right. that group page. And it seemed like they gained a little momentum when – the boards are down and now it's kind of a full force thing we got a couple of creators come on that's good and talk and yeah it's 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 just an easy way to communicate on facebook um and, and then know, we short, know how fickle that image board can be sometimes yeah and it, i think sometimes it's just easier to like kind of post images and replies and stuff like that with facebook and so that really, was cool. i kind of hate facebook yeah, I kinda. will say I've been enjoying seeing like people's rare things they have. Um, well, well, I think I think the good thing about Facebook is that you kind of have to go out of your way to go to the forums, but Facebook you're gonna check it. Like a lot of people just check it anyway, mm-hmm. and it it's more apt to have people kind of come in within like five days or something, like a week or two weeks. We got like a hundred members, you know. It's like on the forums nowadays, you're lucky to see like 10 different people. Well, that's true. I won't disagree. I, I'm just saying as a communication tool, I hate Facebook because yeah. you can't have a discussion for more than five minutes before it falls off. Yeah. Well, and there's a lot of pros joining in on the conversations too, which is cool. And then uh, shortly after that, Eric joined in and then he started one uh, just for Savage Dragon. So the, there's the Eric Larson fan group page, which you gave that address to. And then... Uh, Eric started the Savage Dragon one, and he's on both of the groups. Um, the Savage Dragon page doesn't have like a good name; it's kind of like a bunch of jumbled letters after Facebook.com. So oh. if you go to the Eric Larson fan group page, there's a pinned post at the top that links to the Eric Larson uh, Savage Dragon page as well. So you can reach both by going to the link that you supplied. Uh, sorry. And then, uh, last bit of news, uh, just real quick, Eric mentioned that, um, Savage Dragon 202 was going to be another kind of experimental issue where he was going to do a nine panel per page issue with each page having a different configuration of the nine panels. And, uh, hilariously, this was inspired by an incorrect internet meme. There's the internet meme of, uh, Batman slapping Robin in the face. Okay. And people exchange the word balloons above Robin and Batman's head to say things. Typically, Robin says something incorrect. Batman says the correct thing. You know, the slap goes with it. This is the one like the Hal Jordan one where he's punching? Yeah, kind of like that. And it's the funny thing is, is like the uh, meme originally said Robin was saying something like, here's my idea for a nine-panel grid. On the big shot, first you, and then, you know, he's interrupted, of course, because he's getting slapped. Batman's like... Fool, you can't do a big shot on a nine-panel grid. 
Which, of course, you know, Larson was like, well, duh, you know, yeah, you can. You just make the other panel smaller. Right. So, internet meme. <laughs> Whoever made this incorrect internet meme. I'll show them. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> you forever altered Savage Dragon history. Wow, that's obscure. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. There you go. Well, and it was funny, too, because when we were talking to Eric last episode, we were like, you got any other experiments that you want to do or anything? And he was like, no, not right now. You know, so... It definitely just kind of popped up out of nowhere. Top of his head, you know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's let's jump into the trivia. We'll get through this quick. Uh, we didn't do trivia last episode, but uh, episode thirty-four we did. We still haven't awarded a winner. So the question of that uh, for that uh, episode was: Name the deceased Vicious Circle member who briefly starred in a TV show based on Dragon's exploits as a cop. And uh, we had two people write in. Uh, Will Poe, he wrote, uh, Dear Craig, Jim, and Raven, the Chicago Bull, where's my prize? <laughs> Savage Dragon fan forever. Uh, Love it. That's cor- And that's correct, yep. And uh, we also had Matt Hickman write in, um, and he wrote, Love the show. Which uh, Vicious Circle member starred in a show about Dragon? That would be the Chicago Bull. I believe he first showed up in the Dragon cartoon, and he's killed in issue 24 and made it into the newcomer special. But I... Do you guys know what he means by the newcomer special? That's the burger that Batman ate. <laughs> oh, all right. That's right. <laughs> I'm thinking like a comic. Like he made it into like, I'm like, what's the newcomer special comic? That's right. Yeah, that's right. That was a genius gag. So um, I tossed a coin up in the air and Will Poe won. He wins a copy of uh, G-Man learning to fly. Uh, trade paperback, which includes uh, the Savage Dragon G-Man crossover story. And I had Chris G, Chris G. Russo sign and uh, sketch a G-Man on the inside cover. So, Will, hope you enjoy. Thanks for writing in. Um, and now, uh, as trying to do something new, we're not. We're going to discontinue the trivia for a bit and try out a new segment, which uh, doesn't quite have a name yet, but. Uh, my idea for this new segment is that um, we as the hosts will pose a question to the other hosts uh, from uh, either a listener who has written in with a question or from one of us if uh, we don't like the listener questions. But it will be a specific question each uh, month that we'd have like a roundtable discussion about. Um, Listeners are encouraged to write uh, write to us with a question for the next episode of their own or write in about their opinion about the question we discussed. And uh, any of your questions and comments sent to us will be read on the next episode and we'll choose a winner from everyone who uh, wrote in to receive a Savage Dragon related prize. In addition, so, uh, I'm going to try and bust this out real quick, but uh, we'll have the – I'm working on a uh, Savage Dragon t-shirt theme for there's only going to be one per year. So when you win this sort of thing or the contest that we do, whether it's trivia or this opinion segment that we're starting, um, you will be, you know, you'll tell us your t-shirt size and we'll get you a one of a kind t-shirt that's just related to this year. Like when we go into 2016, we're going to do retire the old design. So that'll just be a little extra incentive for you listeners. You'll have a uh, one-of-a-kind, super limited edition t-shirt that only listeners of the show can have. So it'll be li- limited to like 12 t-shirts a year or something like that yeah. of the same design until the next year? That's it. That, that's pretty awesome. I can't wait to see what that's going to look like. We're going to bust it out and put the design up on dragonfan.net. It'll make its way to our various Facebooks, Twitters, all that good stuff. So to be nice. clear, they're going to send us questions that we are going to discuss. Well, I think we can work either way, and we'll we'll talk about. It. And I think this segment is a work in process in progress. But um, I was going to start off this segment with a question and pose it to you guys, and then we we're going to ask listeners. They can either chime in with their own opinion on our question or our discussion, or they can send us a question for the next segment. And if we choose their question, or uh, read their comments or whatever, they'd be entered into the drawing for the prize, and we'd pick a person based on that so sounds a little complicated let's go through like we'll, we'll go through the first question and then i'll just kind of repeat the instructions for the listeners and what they need to do all right but um the question i pose to you guys for this episode is 
who is your least favorite kind of major character in the Savage Dragon series over the long run? Like, which character? I'm not talking about a guy that showed up for a few panels or a vicious circle guy that, you know, never said anything. But of, of the kind of major players in the book, who has been your kind of least favorite character? And, and why would you? Why? I, I can already see how this is going to skew. <laughs> I know. Go ahead. Do we answer? <laughs> well, I mean, everyone has their own opinion. I so. know right away. I, I don't like Jennifer. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> I guessed it. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah. I never liked yeah. Jennifer. She was just not. She was just so whiny and naggy, and just so uh, it's just so not fun. It had to be a purely physical relationship. I don't know. I always kind of had a soft spot for Jennifer. I always thought she. Um, I always thought she was poorly used i guess Mm -hmm. so i always put it more to the writing than the character yeah i she always came off as weaker than she should have been and unfortunately i kind of think that angel's starting to fall into that too which start which frustrates me to no end (laughs) must be genetic (laughs) well with this year 200 i think someone pointed out in what like a um a review that I read, it seemed like every story Angel was kind of like the damsel in distress. That's my biggest problem is that she she gives up all the fucking time, and it doesn't make any sense unless she's like become really nihilistic. Mm-hmm. Her mom was a loser. I'm just saying, like, if yeah, I I agree with you, Raven. I just and I think even Eric said it when we talked to him about Maxine. He just said, you know, he tried everything with Jennifer, and it just never clicked. I mean, you look at all the other female characters or girlfriends of of Dragon, and they all had personalities. You know, Alex, even Reader Meter Maid was kind of quirky and funny, and she was always like freaking out. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget what the name of who was the the um, the black uh, the African American lady. No, not Rapture. The other one. Oh, for, um, oh, I liked her. Yeah, the just yeah. normal girl, right? That he yeah, yeah, for yeah. like two issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even she kind of she clicked. Rapture clicked. Rapture, Rapture had her own thing. Um, they were they were just you know. And then Jennifer came along, and it was just like, I just felt like she didn't have a personality. Yeah. And she just stuck around, and it was just like I just yeah. wanted her to get killed so quick. And then she came back. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn it, Jennifer. So that that's gonna be my least favorite character, and I'm so glad that. You know, with Malcolm, he's kind of just – Eric's kind of knocked it out of the park with this Maxine character. So to have like a female kind of you know, a supporting character, a girlfriend or wife or whatever that really clicks is 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 nice. Easily as interesting as Malcolm. She's easily as interesting as Malcolm and that's awesome. Yeah. So, Jim, who's your least favorite character then if uh... – If not well, Jennifer, who? <laughs> Obviously. Um... I was thinking about it, and I want to say, oh shoot, I had it. Now it's gone. Um, trouble is, I find interest in like every character, so that's, that's not cool. really an answer. That's more of dodging the question. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, oh, who was it? Shit, I had somebody. Oh, Hercules. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I've never really cared about Hercules at all. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I could see that. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I like the gods, and I like the other gods. I like Thor a lot and I like the guy with the skis a lot and I like <laughs> but something about Hercules, he's just I don't know, he's he's I guess he's kind of like how you guys see Jennifer. He's just such a straight-laced but I think just that kind was, of boring guy. I think that's the whole thing about Hercules though. He's supposed to be kind of a stiff dude. And isn't like, it funny that Hercules and Jennifer hooked up in that one? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Good point. Good point. Perfect. You boring yeah, bastards. Yeah. <laughs> Cool, cool. Well, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's interesting. I think, you know, for the sake of time, we'll just kind of shorten this a little bit. You're also going with Jennifer? Yeah, yeah, I I went with Jennifer. Um, But um, for the listeners out there, you know, like I said, we'd like to hear your comments on that and who your least favorite character is. Do you agree with us? Do you disagree? Um, Do you have someone else in mind? You know, send us an email. Let us know. Or... Send us an email with a question to pose for us next episode. And like I said, we'll choose uh, one winner uh, to receive a, a prize from everyone that writes in, either with a comment or a question for us for next uh, episode. I'm sure it'll be ready and, by uh, next episode. So Nice. And so you win a, a limited edition uh, FinCast shirt or uh, 
Savage Dragon shirt. I don't know if you're actually going to make it a FinCash shirt or anything like that, but um, you'll also win the rare second printing of Savage Dragon uh, 100. So um, write to us and, and let us know your opinion. Sweet. And let's see how this new segment works out. I like it so far. So, yeah. So let's get down to the discussion of uh, 201. Two, All right. two, uh, 201. What? 2001. <laughs> You jumped a few. <laughs> 201, what you guys, I mean, from the very get-go, the cover's amazing. I think the cover's one of the coolest covers in a long time, just the, the detail. I, I love when Eric goes all crazy with detail. Love that perspective. Like, just <laughs> yeah. wonky, like, everything. Start jumping to her death. <laughs> That's good. And from the very get-go, like, uh, you see, like, the prison escape, and it's just Dart being a total badass. John Day execution right off the bat. I'm like, oh, that's good. Jim, what did you – did it, you guess I, how Dart was going to escape or something? I, I know you mentioned – I kind of maybe accidentally guessed. I, I basically said uh, af- right after that scene to end, she walked through a wall, which oh. looks kind of like what happened. Shawshank Redemption. She climbed oh, right. Actually, no, I guess she is coming out of a shit pipe, isn't climbed she? Climbed out of the shitter, yeah. I didn't even notice that. The panel's kind of dark. Yeah. Yeah, she's like out of a swamp or – yeah, I see the shitter pipe there. Is that John Day? Does John yeah. walk? John. Yep. John having a bad day. So, I mean, obviously, if you're listening to the FinCast, you have already know what's going to happen, <laughs> so we're not spoiling anything. But, let me know if this was your take on it. My take is she escaped the prison because the freakout turned her into that monster. Oh, yeah. And that's why her clothes are all shredded out, and now she's like kind of like the Hulk, like she's back to human form. That's freakout. That. Oh right, freak out! Is she because freak out's a thing. You you mean she had a she had an episode? No, no, like she, she turned she into took, a shark. She right. took freak out. Like I don't that. think that has to do with freak not freak out. out. What's freak out? That's freak out gets like, rid of your gets rid of it. Gotcha, got gotcha. So she drank some kind of Belco chemical. No, I'm pretty sure gonna... she was bitten by a radioactive shark man. That's exactly what happened. They say it in the issue. Yeah, they do. Well, oh, they, I thought he was just joking. That's really because they could, she, well, no, they don't know. I mean, they, that's a guess, and it seems like the most logical to me. It's kind of like how Peter Parker got his powers. <laughs> me, Mako. So you really think was it Mako that bit her? Yeah, remember he sticks his she sticks his her arm yeah. in his mouth with the sword to kill him. But I find that weird because like Super Patriot never changed. Or but anything here's like the difference: I, he was already superhuman. I thought about this too. I, I've had time to think about it. Right, so. They they specifically say it's like a blood. It's the blood thing. Like Mako bit her and she like killed him at the same time. Uh, His blood went in her blood. So it's like, yes, there was radioactive shark bite. But remember the shark mauling uh, Mako at ground zero. They never went into it. But him getting mauled at ground zero is kind of like, well, clearly a shark bite can give Mako's sort of, like, freak ability to the victim. Right. And so here we have Dart has stabbed Mako. She's also getting bit. There's sort of a radioactive bite slash blood transfusion. I think that's how it rolled out. That's how I entered. Oh. See, this whole time, I, I thought that that was Malcolm joking when he kind of jokes out jokes about it. I thought, like, she was given some kind of Belco well, chemical to help her. Well, to be her. fair, Malcolm could just be joking because, uh, you know, a scientist has not declared that this is fact. Oh, right, right, right. I mean, this is only what I took from it. I yeah. think that's it. I mean, wasn't there a character who got mauled by Mako way back in the early days? You got yeah. Got sh- or what's the fuck's his name? Didn't Dragon get mauled too or something? No. Oh, yeah, but but again, he's already has – he's already in yeah. with powers. If, if right, you right, have right, powers, right. you can't become more powered, I guess. Right. My thing is this. I will say – then I guess we'll have to admit that there's a bit of confusion to it then because, I mean, it's not 100% clear. And she does clearly head to Belko to get something. So when I first read it, I thought she was going to get those powers – well, she might be going there to get freak out or something like that. So, wouldn't that get rid of that? I mean, she'd turn back to normal because she's not a superhuman person at all, anyway. Yeah. So I kind of I don't know. I I don't I like the way I first read it. I read it like she was going to get cured of her Mako thing. Gotcha. Because she says, "What happened to me?" She busts out of the shitter pipe, comes out. She's like, kills the John Day, and then looks in the mirror and says, "What happened to me?" So. To me, upon second reading, I was like, well, okay, it's not that she 
was going to have, you know, Belko do turn her into like a Mako guy or a shark monster or whatever. It's that she had a shark like episode, like Jim said. Right. Yeah. And that's how she escaped. Right. right. And the, when when you take those Belko chemicals, you don't turn back. You also aren't like, necessarily like remember Malcolm went berserk. Yeah. So you're also not necessarily in charge of your facilities, but Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess we'll see as, you know, as it rolls on. It's definitely yeah. an interesting twist to the character. Oh, I love it. <laughs> what with uh, her history with Mako and all that. Well, but it does seem weird that it took so long for it to kick in as well. Yeah. So, we'll see. We get a little uh, continuation of uh, the backup story from issue 200 where we're seeing uh, Angel and Daredevil kind of finishing off those trolls and clearly they're like in love now. Uh, fleeting. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I thought the scene after that was one of the cooler scenes in the book with uh, Frank Jr. And, and Malcolm kind of having a talk as Frank's patrolling uh, the streets of Chicago. They get two and, whole pages to catch up. Yeah, and Eric's really knocking out of the park with the background shots. With, like Definitely. Just make, making you feel like it's Chicago with the, you know, the raised train tracks and stuff like that. Definitely like, trust to say that, yeah. You kind of get the sense that the, the photo, photography trip he took is uh, really played into this these scenes. With the, yeah. like that very last panel on the second page, you kind of see the raised tra- uh, train tracks with the with the stairs going up. <laughs> yeah, I think we said it in the past thing, but I really like how it's kind of pushing Chicago away from generic city. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then my favorite plot twist: <laughs> Maxine recorded the Menage a Trois. Oh yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Well, not to skip ahead, though, I did want to touch on it. I think we're going to see the first divorce in the pages of Savage Dragon. I mean, we've seen... The first? Right? Really? We've seen... Haven't we seen... We've seen marriages. We've seen births. We've seen, you know, whatever. But have we seen at characters ever get divorced? You know, it's funny. I don't think there has been one yet. Yeah, everyone dies so much. Yeah, good point. <laughs> so Frank Jr. and Tierra are getting divorced. Good call. But man. anyway, yeah. To, to, sorry. To go back to your point, yeah. Uh, Maxine, what a character, huh? What the hell is going on with this girl? <laughs> She's awesome, that's what. <laughs> I don't know if that's the word I'd use. She's awesome. Her judgment seems to be slightly impaired. Are we sure she's not the imposter? <laughs> Trying to blackmail? Well, and that's the thing, you know, if you're a fan of Savage Dragon, you've seen, you know, the upcoming covers. Isn't it like 205 or 204 that's got like Angel like punching Malcolm? Yep. With Maxine in the background, like, no. Spoiler, sorry. Oh, I've seen that cover. <laughs> oh, yeah, looks awesome. I'll have to look it up. So there's there's going to be some complications, I think, because of that video. People weren't happy about um, the – some people weren't happy about the Menage a Trois, but I will say that, I mean, kind of just from a reader standpoint, you know that such a poor decision, because as awesome as it was, it's totally a bad decision. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know that, like, it's just going to create terrible drama down the road. Well, you know what I don't get? Like, the people that complain about that, like, the only thing I don't get about that is, like, like people so put off, oh, it's so juvenile and stuff. It's like, have you read much of Savage Dragon? I mean, this is, that's far from the worst thing that was shown in, in the pages of Savage Dragon, you know? I will also like, say, have you not been a juvenile? I mean, were, yeah, were right. we not in the exact <laughs> scenario? I mean... It's like it's not like this is something new in the pages of Savage Dragon. There's been sex scenes and some raunchy stuff. I don't think it has to book. do with the sex, though. The problem isn't the sex. The problem is the sister angle. Yeah. I think that's pe- what got people hung up a little bit. And while, as much as you want to justify it, there is a little bit of a creep factor in there. <laughs> Just gotcha. a little bit. You know, I'll, and I gotcha. think that's kind of the point. That's yeah. It's a terrible. The thing is, it's clearly a bad decision, and it's right. like Malcolm it has not been a. His dad was never a like master of good choices. Right. I think it should be. I think it should be more. More. You know. Um. What's the word before? Justified by these are all kids with very little parental guidance. Bingo. So they're going to be making really, really bad mistakes. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's exactly what. Any teenager, not a 20-something, 30-something adult who has life experience, who knows no matter how awesome that would be at the moment, you're going to mess up your life a little bit. You know, that's 
some you can't kick your sister out of your life, and then you've got this girl that's like the girl of your dreams. You're making a right. terrible choice. Right. But, you know, he's a teenager. So there you go. So what do you guys think about the uh, apparent reappearance of Belco Chemicals? I'm actually the- thrilled that we now have faces to put to this corporation. Yeah. Love People it. I can either root against or love. <laughs> Melvin Belco. <laughs> so kooky. Such a kooky little guy. I don't know if, if you guys ever read like uh, – Oh, he Jack- is Mr. Belco. I missed that far. Yeah, part. yeah. Melvin I didn't realize Belko. that he is Melvin Belco. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you guys have read old issues of uh, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, like from the Fourth World stuff mm. that that Kirby, Jack Kirby did. Mm. But uh, in in that book, there's the Evil Factory, which was like Dark Lord created the Evil Factory on Earth to do like <laughs> DNA experiments. And it, this this lab reminds me exactly of of those scenes in that book. And I'm wondering if Eric was going after that vibe, you know, with like weird test tube things with monsters kind of swimming through them and stuff like that. Um, is it me or does that one look like chaos? Yeah. Well, which, like which the, one? The, the orange one. Yeah. You yeah, can't see his bit. head though. I love this. whole like giant, like evil laboratory. And they, of course they think they're doing good. I love Eric's like little kind of caricature type people. Excelsior! (laughs) (laughs) I laughed out loud when I read that. I was like, perfect. I will say that uh, one Asian guy's neck gets really, really thin. (laughs) (laughs) It's great, though. If you're a supporting character in Savage Dragon, you're probably going to be hideous. Yeah. (laughs) I I love how Dart comes in and just destroys the place. And it looks like she's kind of like... I think it's kind of cool, and I think we're going to see this next... Issues that she's kind of like uh, making the vicious circle kind of like an all female force, or at least her main kind of. And I'm all for henchmen. that. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty up. cool. Women are always more interesting than men. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, you legitimately asking me that question? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't want to go down that path. Uh, it's it's good. I love the uh, I love the idea of the uh, female. It's again, it's just something new. I mean, two hundred issues, and we still haven't seen something like an all female vicious circle. So it's bad. It's badass. Right, right. I love this little sequence of just the uh, haters. They're hating on Malcolm, you know, never trying to like make moves on him, and then yeah, dip along to the whole like uh, Belko getting smashed up. Good, you know. It's awesome. It's awesome stuff. Good action. And the, and as soon as we think that you know Daredevil and Angel are in love, it's like you get that scene where she's just kind of just creeped out about him. Like he's, <laughs> I get the sense that he's just like overly annoying to her. Yeah. I don't like know. I, I think there might be something else going on. I can't yeah. wait to see. I'm with I'm with you, Jim, because it kind of like seems like, huh? Creepy. Creepy is a good word because it's like he could just be creepy because he's old, an old timey guy. Yeah. yeah, but I don't. I think sense. she may not like men very much. Oh, is that what you meant? That's kind Ooh. of what I'm getting at. I, I think maybe she, I didn't even think of that. But maybe either. you're right. I thought now that she's been with Maxine, maybe that maybe she's beginning to realize that maybe men aren't for her. I hope that's that would be crazy. That Maxine leaves uh, Malcolm and it's a <laughs> for, Angel for Maxine. Angel. Uh, yeah. That would be the best. It would backfire so hard on him, and it, like, well, Mac, Max, Max that would be interesting. Clear, Maxine is pretty clearly bisexual. Yeah. Oh yeah, but, definitely. Since she was the one so eager. Yeah. To get Mangel in bed. Yeah, good point. Fuck, I can't believe uh, I didn't think of that. I didn't think. Yeah, that is a good, good point. I thought that a grown man that throws boomerangs and hangs out with three kids is creepy. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, mm-hmm, creepy. I get it. Yeah. Good point, Jim. That's crazy. Yeah, definitely. We get a, a great battle scene between uh, Malcolm and uh, Dart in this one. I love the, the scene where Malcolm kind of catches the darts between his fingers. That's I love so- how sarcastic he is about it. Look at that yeah. face. I love the yeah. wisecracking. He's, yeah. He's, he's got like a different tone now than his dad. There, yeah. Like, he, he likes to put words in, in, in his opponent's mouths in the most sarcastic way possible. He's been doing yeah. that a lot. Isn't that pretty crazy how Eric can do that, like switch that up and, and go from – you know, put a different tone. Cause obviously the characters aren't real. So you got to like really think about what you're going to make them say. And it's, 
he's been doing a real good job kind of giving Malcolm a different voice than Dragon because I could see how it could be easy to fall into that trap. He's like narrating. Oh, no, darts. She's reaching for her darts. I am so screwed. That's Whatever yeah. can I do? It's so awesome because it's totally different. Dragon was very much a one-liner type of dude. Right. And this is like quipping and sarcastic quipping. It's totally different. Like you said, it's his own unique voice. It's awesome. I was like, oh, that's great. And again, it uses my favorite, the rarely used Chosen One powers, like super aiming. It makes perfect sense he'd be able to catch those darts. But it's so funny because he was being sarcastic the whole time. I really thought he was being sar- sarcastic about the Mako thing, but I don't think he is. Like when you guys, talking to you guys now, I think you're right. I mean, because she does look like a shark. and Also, it makes sense you gotta wonder like jim said mako is so horrible in dart's life why would she choose to become a shark monster yeah so i gotta say i think she didn't mean to become i think she was there for freak out yeah that makes sense because she says earlier um what does she say she says things that would make both of our lives better if you know what i and then she gets cut off because he hits the alarm I also want to point out that the two we were talking about. It seems that it came out of, came out of nowhere. The two vicious circle female members that are still there are like, "Whoa!" They're shocked when they see Shark Dart. Yeah, there's definitely a new development. Yeah, th- yeah, they're surprised. So this means that either this is something that only recently manifested, or she's totally been hiding it from the vicious circle this whole time. I'm guessing hiding, at least. I don't know if she's been hiding because she's like, what's happened to me? Oh, that's right. Oh, Maybe yeah, that was yeah. the first time it happened. Yeah, okay. I think this is the first time. Okay. Yeah, good. I like talking it over. I don't think these things yeah. that way. It's good. But I love, I love, love, love the scene where Boko Chemicals just freaking explodes. <laughs> you see Dart go flying, and then you just see, you know, Malcolm's disappeared, and then it's like three days later, he kind of climbs out of like a snow patch that is like, hilarious miles away <laughs> although i gotta say like the battery on his cell the phone, cell phone lasts a long that, that was my my initial thought too man that smartphone's got a good battery. <laughs> if he had a blackberry he'd be okay <laughs> i had a blackberry and it used to last like a week i got a new cell phone recently like an htc something it doesn't last a day no <laughs> so malcolm must be rocking it old school nice so just to skip kind of towards the end because Malcolm kind of leaps back and goes back to see Maxine. I love the way this issue ends. It kind of, it's a throwback to Savage Dragon of yore, kind of like, you know, you get Malcolm kind of, here's the shower running and he jumps in to surprise Maxine and it's Tiara there. Of course, you know, reading in the beginning of the book, we heard out like from Frank, how Tiara was kind of crashing on couch to couch. So apparently while Malcolm was gone, Maxine let her crash on the couch and, the couch? You, you, that was your first assumption? Oh, well, maybe not. Yeah, I didn't even see. I'm not even thinking that What's way. What's funny? Dirty is mind. Jim. I totally thought that way. I was like, <laughs> I was like, come on, Maxine. She can't get enough. She's sex crazy. She's want a little brown sugar. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, but so it, it's kind of it reminded me of that scene where like. Um, Dragon opens the door for to Rapture and uh, Rita Meter Maid's kind of jumping out of the shower. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, which issue? Kind of was like a throwback to that for me, and uh, I, I I enjoyed those old Savage Dragon issues where he had this weird kind of uh, misunderstanding between Rapture and Dragon about other girls hitting on him and stuff like that. And this is kind of it's kind of a cool thing. This crazy love triangle thing going on. I think Eric's really hitting his groove with these relationships. I think he writes good kind of uh, uncomfortable situations. Oh yeah, this is gonna be terrible. You know, this is gonna like be so crappy. Yeah, you know, it it just feels like the book's clicking with this scene and everything to me. It just, you know, uh, like and it, even more with what Jim brought up with you know. Maybe Angel's, you know, a lesbian or something like that, you know, and maybe she's falling for Maxine now that she had that threesome or something. Because she was very complimentary of Maxine. She was like, oh, Maxine's a real firecracker, you know, all that stuff. So, yeah, Yeah. puts a whole new twist on that. I never even thought of it. Yeah. So there's a lot going on with a lot of different, you know, relationships now in this book. So, yeah. So, uh, guys, I got a boogie. All right, brother. 
you're going to have to do the Vanguard section without me. No, no. Can do. Uh, can do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, any last will, thoughts? Last thoughts were I enjoyed, uh, 201 immensely again like i said i think eric's firing in all cylinders i think i think this new direction with malcolm was the right choice i know there's some people out there pretty vocal that don't like malcolm and wish dragon were back and i think that's just people that can't deal with change but uh i just i'm enjoying this you can tell that eric is kind of i wouldn't say got his groove back because i always enjoyed savage dragon but just has got a little more fire in this with with a new character and the the new cast co-signed so. totally agree all righty guys i'll see you in another month uh i enjoyed speaking with you all, all right, right man talk to you later, Craig. good talking dragon okay. with you you too see you guys yeah going straight into vanguard i really like vanguard that <laughs> little intro um, where they're talking about, you know, the three dead civilizations and the empty floating. So atmospheric. That's good stuff. It is good stuff. It's in, and I'm glad he took a moment just to kind of recap the whole situation here. Yeah. It just, it, it kind of brings everything, you know, to the, you know, all this stuff's been boiling in the background if you've been paying attention and all the dialogue, but this really kind of reminds you of the stakes which is and again it's too it's like there's so many like uh balls in the air you know like that it really was nice i mean it's funny it just as soon as i read all that stuff it just really like re-cemented it and like i it's just created such an awesome atmosphere for this moment that's happening with like the you know death watch i was like oh dude it's good it's so good i just want to really drop props on the writing there also, from the looks of it, um, they've expanded their story. Another issue, yeah. Because I think we had two two installments in two hundred, and he, and I remember uh, Frank said that they were going to cram three in if they could that he and did. conclude it. But now this is the third, and it's still going. So an oversized epic conclusion. Mm-hmm. I always love when you see those. Um, it's like, and it's funny because sometimes the mainstream guys will do that. They call their shots as good as they can, but sometimes you'll see like. Issue 13 of 12. Yeah. And where they realized they just had to push it another issue. So I guess that's what happened, which, hey, the way this read, good, let it breathe. Yeah, let it breathe is my is my rule. Totally. This was awesome. Um, I love the twist of him coming back through Morph. Uh, Lurch. Lurch. Morph. <laughs> They're called morph, Morphlings, I think. Lurch. I love the twist of him coming back through Lurch. And then, you know, Lurch has been going through this whole struggle. Um, yeah. With any th- everything anyway, so it was such an awesome twist because now the real crux, the fate of the climax of this story, is really can Lurch duke it out with the personalities inside yeah. him. It's good. It's good stuff. Gary or fuck it, Gary Frank, you did an amazing job. Fantastic stuff going on here. I love the sort of sequences where like you know. Uh, Lurch is sort of half, like I'm looking at the page right now where he's like half Death Watch, half himself. Right. It's good stuff. And then Um, I never thought I would care about Modem. Yeah, she's definitely one of the more interesting characters here. And she stepped up. She's really like kind of helped save the day here in a big way. I I really like how when Death Watch gets reverted to his human form. (laughs) Yeah, just naked and all embarrassed and pitiful. It's good. It's so good. This was such a good backup. I don't always, and it has nothing to do with Vanguard as a character or the art or the writing has nothing to do with that. It's just that I don't always click with Vanguard as strongly as say the main story or something, but I've really been loving like this little arc they've been doing. It's just fantastic. Yeah, this has been good. I, 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 my biggest worry is uh, Lurch because he has kind of become my breakout favorite character, just because of how complex he can be. He's going through some stuff. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Modem being, uh, I kind of, I did kind of think that they uh, be making Death Watch responsible for all of the stuff that went on with the robots with the mechs. Um, I think that kind of cl- cleans their hands a little bit too easily. Mm. Yeah, I see where you're going with it. I like the idea, though, that he was like, I don't know, it's it's hard because I see what you're saying. At the same time, 
I really love the idea of like here's this guy who's like a master manipulator and was like right. just hiding behind the scenes pulling. That's always kind of something I think is cool. So right. I don't know. I see where you're going, but I also really dig it. So it's tough. <laughs> yeah. But um, the punch out ending here, of course, um, Modem, the mechs, and um, Lurch all stay behind because they need to ex uh, get rid of the uh, you know Death Watch's taint. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, it really, I'm pretty sure Modem's okay, because I know we, she can go intangible right. by going through computer circuitry. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure she's okay, but uh, hopefully Lurch gets out alive. Yeah, we'll see. You know, you know the hive mind is fine, because they're not actually in that shit. Right. So, yeah. Although we did have a close call with Wally already in the previous serial, so you got to wonder if uh, they won't they won't pull that card again. We'll see. I mean, it's interesting, and it's really, like I said, some of the strongest Vanguard stuff uh, to date, I think, right. just for me, just my own personal mileage. So, yeah, hats off to uh, Gary and Frank. Absolutely killer stuff. Yep. Um, awesome, awesome 201. Looks like we're off to a good start for 2015. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like things are going to be okay. <laughs> well, uh I don't know. You got anything else you want to jibble jabble, or shall we wrap it up? I think it's about time to wrap it up. Let's wrap um, it up. In Savage Dragon 202, stripped of his lightning powers, Malcolm Dragon finds that he can no longer rely on the one thing that kept him alive. Now he faces his most fearsome challenge yet, at a time when he's most vulnerable. Malcolm Dragon fights the deadly damsels of the Vicious Circle. Raptor, Vane, Samurai, Insect, Tigress, Volcanic, Climax, Double Page. And it's going to be a kick-ass issue. I don't think I read the solicitation on this one. What's the cover? It is Girl Trouble. It's the one where Malcolm is fighting all the ladies of the Vicious Circle. I don't think I've seen that cover either. Jesus, I'm out of the loop. It is a nice cover. Um, Is is it on the Facebook? I will make sure. Pretty sure it's at Dragon Fan, but if it's not, it will be up at Dragon Fan. It is also on Facebook. And just a quick double check, see if it is on the funny books off the site. Cracka yakka schmacka. Let's see. Yes, it is. If you want to see Neutron Bob 202 uh, is the cover. So yeah, that's him fighting all the ladies of the vicious circle. It's cool. It's a good. It's good cover. It's awesome. Uh, he went with knockout white, which uh, is super good for this uh, very busy cover of all all these characters. So it's gonna be great. It looks fantastic, especially in light of the uh, issues with uh, Dart and you know you don't know how the sav- uh, vicious circle is gonna react to this new development with. Uh, her shark abilities, um, seeing all of the vicious circle fighting Malcolm. I wonder if Maxine will have sex with all of them. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the plot twist to end it? Yeah. Ladies, they just go into the bedroom like a clown car. <laughs> oh, let's hope that's the twist. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be an awesome issue, I think. It is. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for listening, everybody. See? Remember, remember, remember to send us letters. We really want to hear from you guys, especially, uh, if you got questions that you want us to talk about on the show. And there's a, uh, sweet t-shirt in it for you, and, uh, Craig always brings it with the amazing prizes and stuff, so. Indeed. Uh, remember, our email address is, uh, savagefincast at gmail.com. Thanks again, guys. Thanks again. The Savage Fincast is a member of the Gutter Trash Podcast Network, which can be found at guttertrash.net. The Savage Fincast is part of the Comics Podcast Network, which can be found at comicspodcast.com. Also, find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash user slash savagefincast. 